Our standing, please open your Bibles to the book of Isaiah in the 35th chapter. Isaiah 35. Let's read the, the very first verse, verse 1. And I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going to preach tonight, or if I'm going to teach, or if I'm just going to talk and ramble a little bit. Uh, I'm going to share a thought that that uh, came to me. I don't, want to, I don't want to say I came up with this thought, but uh, while I was at... Uh, Calvary this past week and hearing Dr. Taylor preach, uh, just something he said, I grabbed a three by five card in my pocket and I jotted, a, I got three different ideas down for sermons, uh, so that was a real good message he preached, uh, because he gave me three ideas for other messages, I preached one of them this morning, and and then tonight is, is more of a more of a thought, and I want it to be a, a, a thought of encouragement. Uh, that I got from that, but uh, let's read this verse here and pray, and I'll let you be seated. Isaiah 35, verse 1, ready? The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together this evening. God, thank you for your word and its promises. God, I ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts, and that, that the truth that that you gave me, that uh, you encouraged me with, that I would be able to share that same truth, that it might be encouraging and empowering to everybody under the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you for those that take the time to very regularly tune in and, and look up our channel on YouTube. Lord, I pray that these messages will be a help and a blessing to them also, that uh, you would speak to their hearts and work in their lives. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The Bible talks about Israel, and and when it, when God is saying He's causing the desert to bloom, uh, He has literally done that in Israel. Uh, it's it's kind of a uh, a wilderness location, if you will, and they are one of the large exporters of roses in the world. Uh, they're growing roses out in the desert and, and sending them, shipping them all over the planet. Uh, and a lot of people don't, you don't think, you don't associate uh, roses with Israel, but, but a lot of, uh, that's one of their big exports. And you know, when you think of the wealth and riches of the Middle East, everybody automatically thinks oil. The Middle Eastern countries, that's one of their big things, it's oil. Well, uh, God has literally caused the desert to bloom, to blossom, uh, not just in, in a figurative or a spiritual sense, but in a very literal sense there. And, and I want us to, to just think a little bit about Israel. And, and then I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Uh, and from just a purely human, practical, and, and just for a moment, I want us to leave the, the spiritual aspect Set that aside just for a moment. That's a very hard thing for me to say uh, as, as a preacher. But, but I want us to, to, to filter that out a little bit and look at the, the relative insignificance. When you take the spiritual aspect out of it, Israel should be a relatively insignificant place on the planet. In, in size, we're talking about square miles and everything. It's a little bit smaller than the state of New Jersey. So when you get home, look up state of New Jersey on, on the map of the U.S. And Israel is a little bit smaller than New Jersey. As far as land, surf, land area. Now you could you could go across the planet and ask people, what do you know about New Jersey? What have you heard about New Jersey? How much has New Jersey been in the news here lately? I haven't read a whole lot about it. I mean, I know their, their governor and, and COVID, we get updates about 
from just about every state except maybe Iowa uh, or Idaho or you know some of the, the less populous states uh, but but New Jersey you might have heard something about COVID or maybe something about a protest there but other than that and, and let me put it this way how much of an impact on the rest of the planet is New Jersey having? Well, maybe that's not a real fair comparison. Let's look at population-wise. Population-wise, as far as uh, our, our 50 states, Israel is the closest in population to the state of Virginia. Virginia has about 8.5 million people, and Israel has about 8.4 million people. So very close in population to the state of Virginia. So again, the same question. How much of an impact on the rest of the world, or how much of an impact on the other side of the world, is Virginia having? Really? None. But it comes right down to it. How much do you think the state of Virginia is in the news in England? Or in France? Or in Yugoslavia? Or in India? or in China, or in Japan, or in Panama, or in Argentina. And so when we look at that, there's, there's about the same amount of people, roughly, pretty close, the same amount of people. If, if, well, let's take geographic size. Well, about the same size as New Jersey. So if we go by either one of those metrics, those locations really aren't having a, a, a worldwide impact. And yet it's very common for us to hear about something that's going on in Israel. Whether it's going on in Israel or along the border of Israel with between Israel and one of its neighbors. Now you understand, there's a lot more unrest in, amongst the various countries throughout Africa. I mean, there's a lot of battles and struggles and killing and, and, and fighting and, and wars and... and infighting going on in the heart of Africa a lot more than what's going on between Israel and its neighbors. But we hear about Israel. We hear about Israel. And it's because there is a spiritual element to that. It's because God has His eyes on Israel. It's because Israel has been referred to as, as His wife. In the Old Testament, Israel was referred to as God's wife. In the New Testament, the church is referred to as the bride of Christ. <clears throat> but God's attention and God's focus is there on that little bitty New Jersey-sized patch of land, Virginia-sized group of populations, and I just got to thinking, there's little old Israel. And, and, that, and that's what it is. It's, it's little. Now, I would mess with them. <laughs> because a lot of people have looked at them and said, look how tiny they are. And they've underestimated them and what they had. They didn't underestimate them. They underestimated their God. And God is still their God, even though a lot of the, the Israeli people are not religious people. It has a secular government. And it's a very secular way of life now. Um, but there are many practicing Jews there, obviously. Uh, but uh, God still says don't mess with them. God's promise of blessing those that bless them is still in effect. And cursing those that curse them and dealing with them in kind is still very much in effect. Because he made it. He didn't put an expiration date on that. He said, I will. Abraham, I will bless them that bless you. And bless the, uh, those that bless your seed. And curse them that curse you. And curse those that, that curse your descendants. And that's going to go on and on and on. And so uh, we see, if you read through the book of Revelation, you see God's not done with Israel. He's not cast them aside. Uh, he still has a plan for them. And, and still something's going on. But, but look how tiny Israel is in the grand scheme of things. Get, get that old globe off and dust it off and look at, at, at just the, the... I know you look in the back of your Bible and you see the map and you say, well, that's, that, that Israel takes up a whole page until you zoom out. And then you see everything kind of in that general area and you say, oh, well, they're just a tiny little 
a tiny little strip of land there, that's not much. And yet, it's not just our attention that's focused there. They don't just show up on our news channels. Everybody has a camera pointed at Israel. Now, some Middle Eastern countries also have guns pointed at Israel and rockets pointed at missiles and bombs. And, but, but the rest of the world, they set a camera up and they, what's going on there? What's happening there? And it's like somebody hiccups in Israel and it makes it to our news. Oh, ten people threw rocks in Israel. That's on the six o'clock news. Well, there's more people throwing rocks at HPM on any given weekend. What well, used to be HPM. It looks like it anyways. A lot of those windows are broken out. <laughs> uh, now, here's, here's a thought I want to share with you. It occurred to me that if God could focus the world's attention on one little speck of land. And he can. And he has. Then why couldn't God focus the world's attention on a small group of people or even on an individual? We, we need to be very careful to think that the the great men of God are a thing of the past. Oh, the, the C.H. Spurgeons are all gone. That's a thing of the past. I mean, the men that, that, that moved their entire country closer to God, that's a thing of the past. The, the days when God would use people, just uh, 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 people that weren't pastors and they weren't preachers, but they were just what we'd say, the, the, the backbone of the church and use them for a great revival. That's in the past. No, listen to me. If God can and He has focused the world's attention and put a magnifying glass in front of their eyes and pointed it towards Israel to get their attention on Israel, then God can do that to anybody. And God can raise anybody up from any country, from any location, from any city, from any state, from any little village, any little county, and say, look, I want the whole world to see this person and to hear what they have to say. And I started getting, that, that was an encouraging thing to me. Because I know sometimes, and maybe this doesn't happen to you, maybe, maybe this is just me, but I think, you know, it's just little old me stuck out in the middle of halfway to nowhere. I mean, Cardington is not the epicenter of the world trade system. All the crossroads don't come through here. And I said, we are gloriously isolated. And, and that's a very good thing. We, you know, there's a lot of things this isolation has kept us from. But sometimes that makes me think, well, what could God do with little old us? We're just a, well, the same God that can draw the world's attention to Israel, the same God can draw the world's attention, not just to our church, but the same God can draw the world's attention to each and every one of us as an individual in our church and use us. He won't force it on us. He won't force it. In size, Israel's smaller than the state of New Jersey. In, in population, it's a little bit smaller than the state of Virginia. But as far as importance, as far as uh, its influence, it's very powerful. Very powerful. You know, if, if we decided as a nation, if, if there was any other country that all of a sudden switched governments and said, uh, 
we're going to move our capital to this other city. And our president said, okay, we'll recognize whatever you say your capital is, we'll recognize that as your capital. I doubt it would make the news. It might be buried on the 30th page of the newspaper, but it's not going to be up front and people, there would be no controversy over it in our media. But our current president said, we're going to recognize Jerusalem. That's, that's what Israel says their capital is. Why are we trying to force a different capital on them? We are, we're not the boss of them. Tel Aviv, that's not. Their capital is Jerusalem. And presidents for the past several administrations have said, we, we, need to, we really need to recognize and move our embassy to the right city. And none of them ever did it. And then this one did and said, oh my goodness, the world's coming to an end. He's going to make somebody mad. <laughs> He's just respecting the sovereignty of that country over there. Where's the controversy? Because God said, I want everybody to look at Israel. I'm not done with them yet. And God can do that for us as individuals. If we quit allowing ourselves to be governed by fear. Well, if somebody started looking at me, I might have to behave myself. That's as good a reason as any. If God's going to point somebody and bring somebody over to me, then I better be ready to share the gospel with them. Yes. Yes. When, when Spurgeon passed away, I think it was the, the, the current Prime Minister of England. Was that who it was that wrote a letter to his, to his widow? The, the Prime Minister of England wrote a very, a very moving letter about the loss that they had experienced in his death. The Prime Minister of England. A Baptist preacher dies and, and the country's Prime Minister writes his widow. How does that happen? And, and it's, it's, it wasn't that he was this greatly educated and eloquent. He was, he was basically from, he was from Car, uh, England's version of Cardington. <laughs> a farming community and just kind of a backwoods. When he, when he went to preach, people made fun of how he talked, his accent. They, they just, uh, but God brought the spotlight upon him. And God brought people to him. And God caused the prime minister to give attention there. And God caused people from all over the country and even all over the world. And he started ministries. He started writing books and selling books. He'd make money off that book. He started an orphanage. He sold more books and so he started this other ministry. And they started rolling through and there was just ministry after ministry after ministry after dozens of them. That God used to... How did, how did that happen? It wasn't because he was great. It was because he was greatly used by a great God. <clears throat> and you look at the, the people that God has used all throughout history. And if we're not careful, we'll say, well, what, that, what great people. Just little old me could never do anything like that. But it's not little old me. It's our all-powerful God that does it. But it's through our willingness. God said, Spurgeon, I want you to go to London. <laughs> he said, I don't like the big city. He got there, he said, I was right. <laughs> I don't like this at all. I don't like it at all. And he preached Sunday morning and there was just hardly anyone there. And he said, yeah, uh, I, I really don't care for this. I'll preach tonight and I'm, I'm leaving. By that night, the building was packed. He said, all right, God, if, if, this, if you're going to use me here, I'll stay. I'll stay. It was his willingness to be used by God. And his, his, his acknowledgement that the greatness was in God. You know, if God can make the desert to bloom, and he has... 
And when you see that bloom in the desert, it, attention is drawn to it. Then God can cause us to bloom. And in so doing, and, and I don't want attention drawn to me. I, I'm not, that's not what I'm asking for. Oh, oh, to be famous. No. Oh, to be seen as a messenger for God. Oh, for God to bring somebody my way and give me the boldness and the wisdom and the courage and the words to point them to Jesus. And move them on in His direction. But if we don't ever meet anybody and if nobody's brought our way, that's a little bit more difficult to do. Let's ask God to do something with little old us. That'll impact the world. That'll impact the world. And I don't mean just through our giving to missions. I mean, how about, let's ask God to use us personally. Let's ask God to use us individually. God, help me to reach someone. God, help me to reach someone else, and someone else, and someone else. And God, help me to never be satisfied until Jesus comes back and takes us out. Let's stand tonight, every head down, every eye closed. It's so very important for us to not sell ourselves short. Because in so doing, we're selling our God short. It'd be easy to look at Israel and say, what an insignificant little patch of land. There's no great resources to speak of. The, you know, Israel's not known for its great reservoirs of, of crude oil or diamond mines or gold mines or anything like that. And yet God has used them to impact and influence the world. We can easily say of ourselves, I'm, I'm not anything spectacular. What could God do with me? Why not present yourself to Him and find out? Why not ask? God, use me. Use me. Yes, use our church, but use me too. Our Heavenly Father, give us a desire, a hunger to do something for you to be used for you, to, to give you honor and glory with our lives, our actions, our conversations. May it all be used to bring others to Christ. God, help us to dedicate ourselves to you. Lord, help us to ne never believe the lie that Satan tells us that we're not anything or anybody of importance. Help us realize that we are important enough to you that you sacrificed your only begotten Son for us. God, thank you that that importance doesn't stop there. That you do want to use us. You do want to do something in us and through us. God, we ask that you would. Not for our own bragging rights upon ourselves, that we can give you the glory. Bless this invitation now. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.